Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. As we say every week, what a week. Even though it was short for uh, for some of you, um, it was definitely something. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up on Saturday, our special edition of our weekly live stream, because we're assuming a lot of people are going to be ready uh, uh, and uh, celebrating Easter tomorrow just like we are. <laughs> so uh, thank you everybody for uh, for showing up. And uh, I like that. Uh, I like that enthusiasm, blood spuds. Click the like, no excuses. There you go. Um, almost 95% of everybody is a member at this point anyway. So let's make sure we click that light up, like up. Uh, YouTube has been very delinquent in notifying people that are wanting to be notified of our stream so let's make sure that everybody gets notified that wants to uh, to know about it and youtube will do that only if you click that like button and you keep that like count close to the concurrent viewers so um but it was a uh, it was a good week um as uh, as many of our our members know i assume they uh, they looked at uh, our members only post uh where we showed that the interview with Larry Brock did happen. Uh, we met with him on, I believe it was Thursday. Yes, it was. Our days are getting kind of muddled together now. And we're really thrown off because of the holidays. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and um, Angela Sutherland, uh, good uh, good that you, you said that. Unsubscribed again. So check your subscription to Northern Perspective and your other favorite channels. Doesn't matter if it's Northern Perspective or not. YouTube likes just unsubscribing people for for some reason and i think it's part of one of their maintenance programs and it seems like a bug at this point yeah, yeah. yeah not a feature no that's for definitely darn sure not. so um so double check that double check that um but uh it was it was something else to to, to sit down with uh, with mr larry brock um he's uh He's less intimidating in person, I can tell you that. Uh, and, and it is the second time we met him. Um, the first time we met him was at uh, one of Pierre's rallies last summer. Yeah, it was very brief, but, uh, you know, he did a photo with us. And if we ever do reveal who we are, which I imagine we will, but uh, probably it'll be a little bit still. But I should say when we reveal who we are, maybe we can post some of those photos. Yeah, so that'll be fun. And, um, oh, wait a minute, uh, Floody Boy, point of order, requests we adjourn the, the live stream. Oh, okay, so that's a non-debatable motion. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to have a vote on that. <laughs> well, I'm already running a poll, so I can't run another one. Um, we want to know, what's Barnaby doing tonight? Is he being a Stu Barnes, as in, is he driving the plane? Or is, is he assisting on the plane, I should say? Uh, is he driving a train? Or is he barn tending? Yeah. A bartender. So you guys let us know what you want Barnaby to do tonight. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then Bar Barnaby will act accordingly. So there you go. But um, anyhow, um, so thank you all for for sticking with us this week. Thank you all for sticking with us over the the last the last three months. The last what fourteen months at this point? Actually, I guess it's sixteen months. But um, it's been quite a ride, and. Um, uh, I'm sure most of you probably took a look at our our video of Justin Trudeau having just one disaster of a press conference uh, this week, and uh, uh, the short that we actually took from that was uh, um, it, it's actually become quickly becoming our most popular short of all time. Um, our our the one short that we released over December with his. Uh, here is his interview with Global News correspondent. Um, uh, her name's Mercedes. I forget her last name. Um, Mc, Mc Stevenson, I think. Something like yeah. that. Uh, that was the one where she had uh, basically said, you know, Canadians don't like you. And everyone loved that. And um, But this new one is far outpacing that one where where it was so uh so if you haven't checked that out check out uh, check out our short it's uh, it is it is funny because we have to laugh um, sometimes and we did input one of our our live stream memes on the end of that so make sure you check it out now let's get to some of the uh um some of the 
homework uh, for me. Before we do that, I want to say happy birthday to Milady Loves Cats. I saw that in the chat. So, oh, that's uh, hopefully, Barnaby makes you a special birthday drink, virtual drink, <laughs> because uh, it looks like he's going to be bartending tonight. There you go. And the, the drink could be deadly because it's virtual anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, there we go. And uh, I'm just making sure that. Uh, okay. Um, so, my homework, which is basically. Uh, an NP language for uh, administrative tasks. Um, I want to welcome some new members that uh, that joined in. Rune72, Joe, Rohit uh, Agarwal, Michael C. Isles, Joyce Furman, Corey Gagnon, Fay Hoosh, or Hush, uh, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that either way, Rob McLeod, Tim Conley, Gerald Henning, Jamie Zed, uh, Nita Acello, and Herbert Comer, uh for that so thank you very much and john b thank you very much for uh 10 gifted northern perspective memberships thank you thank you thank you goko donny with a five dollar super chat happy easter np family happy easter to you and yours uh humble tracker with a ten dollar super chat peace may sound simple one beautiful word but it requires everything we have every quality every strength every dream every high ideal and it requires also if i may add on to that constant vigilance um, because peace, peace and freedom is never free. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, before we get into it, this is a, it's not a typical Sunday night live stream, obviously, cause it's Saturday tonight. But, uh, what I mean is that it's one of the regular weekly live streams and, uh, we will, um, be discussing a few topics and also I will be having a Q and a, just a general Q and a. Um, we also have both Jester and Barnaby in the chat, as you've already saw Barnaby. Um, we also have three basic rules here at Northern Perspective. Number one, please respect each other and the platform. Number two, no selling, soliciting, or spamming the chat. And number three, please don't use profanity. We like to keep it clean. There you go. So, um, the, uh, the first thing that we, uh, that we want to talk about is, um, uh, CPAC runs a, uh, a running series called Burning Questions. So what they'll do is they'll go out on the street and um, they will just ask people, um, you know, random questions as it relates to the current politics in the country, um, you know, popular issues of, of the week, of the day, that sort of thing. And um, so what we're going get, to get into is, uh, is our first video, which is they ended up going out and asking um, will higher flight prices impact your travel plans in the spring and in the summer? Um, so, uh, you know, that will definitely impact um, or take into account the carbon tax as well. So it's a very interesting one. But before we get to that, Matt24 uh, with a $5 super chat. Hey, guys, have you listened to that Steve Boots guy? But he drives me nuts, but he almost sounds like he knows what he's talking about. No, nope. no, I'm not familiar with him. Not familiar with him. No, um, Louise A. King with a five dollar super chat. Happy Easter, wishing the best for you both and your family. Thank you Thank very you. much Happy for that, Easter. Louise. Okay. Um, <laughs> point of order cannot be parliamentary with these liberals. Love it. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for that, Peeve uh, 1973. Okay, so let's take a look and see what CPAC uh, received in terms of answers from people in terms of their travel plans as it relates to airfare. Will higher airfares impact your spring summer travel plans? Yeah, it uh, makes it a little more unaffordable than I could actually, I can't afford it right now. So yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of too expensive for me. Um, just, just to even go to like Kelowna or Calgary, place like that, it's kind of, kind of too expensive right now. Absolutely, yeah. I have family that live in Toronto that I'm definitely not going to be seeing for a while with the cost of airfare. So just even f I, international flights are probably out of the question for this year too, but I'd say it's definitely impacting for my family anyway. It's, it's a nightmare. And uh, I mean, the flights out of Regina are insanely crowded and overpriced and it, it's a huge ha hamper on everything. So in what ways is it changing your travel plans? Well, I was going to travel this summer for, um, for pleasure to go back to where my dad's from in Europe, and I can't do that now because of the 
flight costs. They're just it's a thousand dollars more than it was when I planned it in the, in the fall. So, yeah, no, they won't. I managed to work this year, but in the future, probably yes. You said you have looked at prices lately. What have you seen? Increases everywhere, uh, especially for like seasonal busy seasons like Christmas, for example. I chose not to fly to see my parents in Calgary because it was too expensive. So, yeah. And that's just a little flight. Yeah, but it cost almost a grand round trip, so. Uh, like, uh, I don't travel a lot, but uh, I used to, like, uh, because of my work, I have to go to the uh, Kelowna and uh, some other places. And uh, I notice if you have to go from Winnipeg to Toronto, which is not that long, it's just a two hour flight, you have to pay around $200, which is expensive, like, uh, a common folk like me sometimes can't afford that to, you know, now the summer is coming up and I think the prices will go up because people will go on a vacation, but like uh, regular people like me can't afford that rate, so. Uh, yeah, I think the higher air, airline prices we see will affect everybody. I mean, you know, I, I've had the privilege of traveling across the country and seeing different cities in Canada, but it would be a lot more difficult now to do that simply because it's just more expensive man like it's just crazy uh for some things so i think it would be more difficult for people to travel i think higher airfares absolutely will impact it um i noticed that a lot of the budget airlines are going out of business now and stuff and it's going back to the ridiculous monopoly they have on uh expensive air flights like you you can fly from winnipeg down to the u.s and then to a tropical place for cheaper than you can fly from winnipeg to vancouver i don't understand it um the airfares definitely i, I actually was I, I i had gone somewhere to africa actually not long ago and the prices were completely like double the price of what you normally spend so um like there was a lot of things I couldn't do once I got there because it was already everything was so expensive. Like. So this is probably surprising to nobody, <laughs> absolutely nobody, with all the inflation that has hit. Never mind the carbon tax, and never mind the fact that the carbon tax is going to be going up again in what two days, which guess what? That's going to impact the flights, uh, the cost of airfares. But you know. Trudeau will have us believe that we're getting uh, all of our money back when it comes to uh, the carbon tax rebates. Oh, and that it's not affecting the industry at all. Yeah, yeah, not at all. You know, it's not like, you know, companies ship things via air. They never do that. Never. Especially when they're trying to get th things overseas. You know, they n they never put things on trains. They never put, like, it's it's just, it's, it's something else. It's something else. Um, but uh, for the next video, I'll let Fox introduce it because she's uh, the one who found it. Yeah, so um, my uncle actually sent me this one this morning. I had seen it on Reddit last night, but it is going viral on Twitter. Um, it's a young lady just talking about how unaffordable everything in this country is. Let's take a look. Single person in Canada who's not struggling right now. Like my family, my husband's family, my friends, my coworkers, random people on this app or that you talk to on the street or in the grocery store, like everyone is just on the brink of losing everything. Like we are literally just working to scrape by, to survive. It's like at this point, the only way to thrive and actually live is to leave, but it's almost impossible to leave because that's expensive and there's just so much criteria that you need to meet to get somewhere else. And then you have to leave everything behind, so it's just there's this huge feeling of hopelessness all across Canada right now. Like I would love to be a mother and you know start the next phase of life, but that would literally bankrupt us at this point. We would have to sell our house and then what? We wouldn't even be able to afford a new house. So what, move in with our parents then? So I just literally can't afford to have kids. And everyone I know who, I don't know is. I think that last thing is what really hits home for me, um, especially being a mother myself. It, it, honestly, our son is like 
the apple of our eye he's he's the reason for our existence you know what i mean everything we do we do for him and to hear a young woman say that i can't be a mother because we can't afford it we would go bankrupt when did having a baby become a luxury item like that is not right at all if you want to be able to have a child you should be able to have one and and not have to be stuck in this economy that is like nope you can't afford to have a kid like that's just so messed up to me well and when did it become a luxury item unfortunately around the year 2016 after trudeau took office and uh this is where it was going right um it's it's just it's tragic because I never knew personally like the joy in life until I had our son. And I think a lot of parents can say that, you know, like you have a purpose now, you know what I mean? And to hear a young person say, I want a family, but I can't have one because it's too expensive. Like that's really, really tragic. Like on one hand, I will say I applaud her and her husband for recognizing the fact that they can't afford it and and not having you know a child when they can't afford it but at the same time it's like this is canada this isn't supposed to be the yeah, country where you can't happen. afford to have kids this yeah. shouldn't be happening right now in this country or or a- anywhere like and it- and this 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 just feeds the whole problem uh, of the population in in canada decreasing without immigration because when you can't afford to have kids you don't have kids so the government says oh well we need more people so now we need to bring more people into the country and that's again that's fine if there are facilities and services to support them which there's not yeah the the liberals have just screwed everything up so royally that our immigration system's not working young people are feeling that they can't have families because they can't afford it we're having a housing crisis an affordability crisis just there's so many things that they just messed up anyway um we're 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 not going to leave you on that don't worry yeah um (laughs) we're not we're not going to be a bunch of debbie downers over here (laughs) there's some good stuff to come uh short sack with a five dollar super chat point of order they told the truth yeah how dare canadians on the street and and, uh and on tiktok actually tell the truth about what is going on in this country you you, you, makes you wonder if uh, there's going to be legislation released with that but you know you can't say anything in public never mind online uh, Shepard with a one hundred forty dollars super chat. Thank you, Thank you so very much, so Shepherd. much for that. Uh, I was going to fly to Alaska this winter. There was a sixty three percent carbon tax on the flight. Holy wow. moly! Um, the COVID lockdowns had nothing to do with the pandemic. It was about climate change lockdown. They want us ready for more lockdowns. Didn't this government bail out Air Canada? All BS. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Um, and this is the thing: you have. You have airfare. It is so, so expensive. Like flying out of places like Pearson um, used to be used to be expensive before just because of the airport tax. Now it is just like, no, no way. No way. If, if like some people uh, would opt to fly to Ottawa out of, say, you know, the downtown airport. Um, is that even open? I don't even know if Porter is even still open. Oh, um, I'm not sure. The Island Airport? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, uh, like, because we you haven't and I looked hardly at flying, ever fly. right? Yeah. Uh, I think the last time we flew was... Our honeymoon. Ten years ago. Well, I mean, you've flown for work within the past year, but I'm, that's a little bit different. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, that's... And I think that was once, so... Yeah, uh, we prefer to road trip it. <laughs> well, because it's, it's cheaper, right? It's more fun. It's cheaper. It's more fun and you get to see this beautiful country. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, it's like there's going to be so many people that can't visit loved ones. They can't uh, do what they want. They can't go on trips that they want. And, you know, Justin Trudeau and and, and Freeland and everybody, you know, when, when everything's bad, they have you believe, oh, well, it's all of the world's problems. But then, you know, if there is an improvement in it, Oh, well, now now it's their their time to t- take credit for it. We see this all the time with them. 
uh, Space Save 2000 with a $5 super chat. I'm out of work and a skilled laborer. How about uh, slow down immigration and allow current Albertans to be employed? Common sense. Happy Easter, uh, nonetheless. Well, thank you very much for that, Space Dave. Happy uh, Easter. Um, I'm sorry that, that you're in that situation right now. It's a difficult situation to be in. And, I mean, you hear all the time um, the liberals are crying, oh, we need skilled laborers, we need skilled laborers. What's happening? Like, none of this makes sense. Nothing that the, these liberals are doing makes any sense. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Humble Tracker has said that uh, if we get to a thousand likes, uh, she's dropping some more, uh, some more memberships. So get the like button going, everybody. Let's get up to a thousand. And, and um, uh, we'll do a stretch goal. We'll do at eleven hundred likes. We will drop a preview clip from our Brock interview. Yeah. So at uh, well, that's think, gonna be that's gonna be tough. Yeah, There's I know a, it's gonna be tough. That's why it's a stretch goal. So okay. So uh, <laughs> all right. Fox, this is Fox is doing, not Cyphers. <laughs> so she says at 1,100 likes, that is when you get your Brock preview, everybody. Uh, Pitsky P with a $20 super chat. I'm an eternal optimist, but when the RCMP says Canadians will revolt when they found out how broke it is, uh, just how broke are we? Eat the bugs and and shut up. What are we talking about, pod life? Um, what, they, uh, what they're referring to uh, from what we have seen, Pitsky P., is it's really around i think the um the mortgages coming due over the next two years um, and it's taking into account the carbon tax increase it's taking into account further inflation and the possible budget implications we don't know what's coming but it sounds like the liberals are spending more money well, just saying and here's an example of the we don't know how broke we are type thing there's a story i read and i don't recall which newspaper it was in um but it was of a young woman in ottawa who bought a home on the river and um, unfortunately lost her job defaulted on the mortgage and then the bank took the home now it wasn't enough for the bank to take the home because she had overbid for the home by two hundred thousand dollars and the home was no longer worth what the bank had given her the mortgage for so now the bank took the home and is also coming after her for that additional two hundred thousand dollars so i think that unfortunately is what the the rcmp are referring to when they say we don't know how broke we are yeah um so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be something to see uh in in uh as as we get to the latter the latter half of this year, I would say, in in the July, August, Sept, uh, and September time frame, when uh, a lot of people that purchased homes towards you know right before the pandemic with with uh, pretty low interest rates, they start coming due, and then the following year in 2025, um, when all of the COVID buying started, that's when things are are going to get. Uh, pretty hairy in the housing market. Uh, Daniel with a seven dollar super chat. Uh, haven't been to New Brunswick since the pandemic. I don't have JT's budget. Yeah, I don't think any of us have uh, have his budget. And Diane Savane with a fifty dollar super chat. Thank you so much for that, Diane. Uh, happy Easter to both of you, Cypher and Fox, and to everyone. Happy birthday to Malay Loves Cats, and happy birthday to me! Oh, happy birthday, Diane. That's awesome. I found a twin <laughs> in the live chat, LOL. Uh, we will get it, Canada. Uh, we will get it, uh, get Canada back. We will take no lessons from corrupt potted plants, because they're all lawyers! <laughs> um, and Brenda Weeb with a uh, 279 Super Chat. Everyone here, we are fighting for our children. Absolutely. And, and that's it. And that's that's the thing that, um, you know, Trudeau's going to find out, I think, very quickly over the next six to eight months is that um, Canadians are paying attention. We are watching everything that they're doing. Um you know, the over half of the Canadian population is really, really paying uh, attention to politics. And uh, uh, we, we have a message for Justin Trudeau when the next election comes. You will respect my authority. You darn, you darn right, because we are the ones that are going to decide who this next government is. It's not going to be... Uh, Trudeau. It's not going to be some mysterious guy out in Switzerland. It's going to be the Canadian people right here. 
and that's when the government is going to change because the the mainstream media is still talking about the fact that the the conservative government has never the conservative government see i'm already getting used to it um the conservatives have had a consistent lead for over like almost two years now and it's just been so steady and unless they do something really really dumb it's not going to change right so that's where they're at um humble tracker with a ten dollar super chat ring the doorbell like you were kids at halloween to get candy <laughs> come on folks there you go humble trackers giving away some memberships once we get to a thousand likes and our stretch goal is at 1100 likes cypher and i are going to drop a clip from our interview with mr brock yes. this past week uh everyone on the live stream will get to see a sneak preview of our almost hour-long chat with uh, with larry brock so uh, so what we've done is we've taken one of our questions and his answer, and you get to see it first before everybody, before we uh, the full video drops on Monday. So uh, 1,100 likes, that's what you get. Uh, so let's get there. Get there in a hurry. Short sack with a $2 super chat. Imagine an east-west pipeline fueling our economy. Yeah, like that would be phenomenal. And imagine uh, natural gas flowing through these pipelines loading up ships, supplying the European countries, supplying the Asian countries, so they don't have to rely on, on Russian oil, Russian gas. Or coal. And you can start strangling Russia out of, out of their, their war with Ukraine, right? And, and then that doesn't require any spending on Ukraine at all. That just requires investment in the Canadian economy. Like, here's the thing. That's a no-brainer. Trudeau doesn't seem to understand that a problem does not have only one solution. There are many, many good solutions to a problem, and one of them is actually investing in Canada, which he seems to have forgotten how to do. Uh, Michael Champagne with a... Or, sorry, Michelle Champagne with a $5 super chat. What Trudeau is doing to this country is intentional, guys. The housing, the food, the travel. I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I'm not an idiot. Well, some people think it's intentional. Some people think that Trudeau is literally just an idiot. Yeah. I think he, I mean, maybe it could be both. I, I think it's heavily weighted towards the side of he just doesn't know what he's doing. Someone in the chat had asked, and I, I kind of saw it fly by, so I didn't catch who it was, but how do we end up with a drama teacher for a prime minister and a historian for the finance minister? And the sad truth is Canadians did that. We did that collectively. We voted for that. So how are we going to avoid that in the future is information, talking to each other, keep that conversation going, tell the people around you, this isn't how this country should be. We can fix it. We need to vote for the right people. 100%. And I think there is, uh, I, th I think uh, Fox is right. Um, and, um, uh, and Michelle is right to a degree because the, the liberals seem to be going down path, the path of the ideology that they want to make the Canadian population dependent on a liberal government. That's the pattern of the decisions that we've seen, right? So the, the more that the government has to give you money and give you supports, then the more you become reliant on said government and would be less likely to vote in a government that would take that away. Now, they take that away, but then what are they giving you in return? Higher salaries, less taxes, and you know a means to support yourself and make your own choices in this life rather than the government making them for you. So um, that's uh, that's what we are constantly trying to remind Canadians of. And uh, that's where all of you come into play when you're you're sharing our videos and having your own conversations with people and reminding people it didn't used to be like this. And we're less than 100 away from some gifted memberships from Northern, or pardon me, from Humble Tracker and less than 200 likes away from northern perspective dropping a clip from our larry brock uh, interview so hit that like button please and mike mahoney with a 20 dollars super chat thank you very much and um, if you had meant to type something just tag barnaby and uh he'll send it to us and we can read it for you yep um so there we go and uh let's see goko donny uh, has a comment um trudeau's jet uh three at uh, three dollars a liter uh, times 8,000 equals $24,000 plus G, uh, GST, which is $27,120 per flight. Right. And I wonder how much carbon tax so, he pays on that. 
Sorry, that was Trudeau's private jet. Yes. Okay. So I would imagine that um, like a 747 or something would be a lot more. more. And then divide it by how many people are on the flight. What, like 200-ish? Something like that. So that's why airline tickets are so expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, just go with it with a 279 Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. And Diane Sylvain with another $5. Thank you very much. Also, going viral is Freeland's twitching. Really easy to see. What the hell is going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, what <laughs> the hell is going on? Yeah. Um, it's that... it's weird. I'll say that. I, I, just, I certainly hope it's not like some um, sort of illness. Like, I'll just throw that out there because I would feel awful making fun of something like that. But if it's like... Having her own supply? I don't know. Yeah, if it's something like that, then I don't feel bad. Yeah, that's uh, like, hasn't she ever seen Scarface? Never use your own <laughs> product? Like, come on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 very strange. Um, we we focused on Trudeau in, in that particular video uh, just because of what he was saying and what he wasn't saying. <laughs> um, so we did, actually didn't get into to Freeland's uh, uh, twitching. Uh, Louis A. King with a $5 super chat. It is up to us to vote in the government based on ability, not ideology. Yes, 100%. Uh, and the bear, Dan, God, I can't see the rest of the name. I hate when YouTube does that. Uh, stand by. Uh, the see. Bear Den Photography. All right, the Bear Den Photography. Thank you very much for a $10 super chat. Remember when Trudeau told a veteran that veterans are asking uh, for more than they can give. I remember that. Yes, um, we recall. Uh, well, this veteran says Trudeau is asking for way too much. Yeah, Trudeau is asking for too much. Uh, if he's asking for more than one seat in the house, he's asking for too much, in my opinion. Um, Night Snow Sky with a 279 super chat. Fox, can we just impeach Trudeau like in the USA? Unfortunately, Unfortunately not. not. Um, so in order for the prime minister to step down, um, there's a few possibilities that could happen. Number one is we get to the end of the term and he's defeated and then resigns. Number two is that um, he, before the end of the term, decides to resign um, number three is that he gets to the end of the term, loses, and then the party does a leadership review and kicks him out. Um, unfortunately, the Liberals are not like any of the other parties that we know of that they don't have in their convention that they can hold a leadership review at any point in time and kick him out depending on the results of the leadership review. The Liberals don't have that mechanism. Yeah, they actually took it out. Shortly. Right before he showed up, yep. which is suspicious. Uh, isn't that interesting? Um, but that could happen. And then I suppose, theoretically, though it has not happened in our country's history, what could happen in theory is that the governor general could remove him from office. Yep. So... So there those are the ways we can get rid of our prime minister. Most of them involve an election. So we, again, need to talk to each other, talk to other Canadians and ask them, are you happy with things right now? Do you notice that things have gotten worse since Justin Trudeau showed up? Give them some food for thought. 20 likes away, folks, until some uh, some memberships drop from Humble Tracker. So 20 away. Uh, Glenn Stewart with a $10 super chat. I was at supper with family. I took my letter uh, to the supper and the family got a bit of an eye opener to were, ooh, were liberal and are very ticketed, very ticked after reading the letter. No liberal votes. That's Excellent. awesome. That's great. Like, that's what Seriously, we need to do. Seriously, congratulations. This is what everybody needs to be doing. Um, yeah. Not to make your Easter dinners weird, but, <laughs> you know, if somebody's like, oh, you know, Trudeau's going to do... Um, what were they calling it rent control yes yeah it's not rent control you can just pipe up hey actually it's not rent control here's what he's planning on doing it's not going to work because it's a provincial thing not a federal thing therefore he has no control over it he's just pandering and trying to get votes yeah done you don't uh, have to be aggressive about it but uh definitely stand your ground and i see people talking about the uh some of the ads that they're being shown we 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 try and limit, we, we pick the lowest setting, everybody. It's, uh, it's our apologies if you're getting a bunch of ads. We don't control when they happen. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the likes, so we passed a thousand. So excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and I'll get to, to those in a second. Floody Boy with a $5 super chat. Thoughts on JT giving uh, JAG his renter's protection fund. Does that uh, guarantee JAG support for the budget? JAG demands a school program in the budget 
Well, we'll see. We'll see if uh, we'll see if farmer care made it into the budget because I haven't talked. I have about a that feeling yet. it hasn't because Freeland kept dodging the question. Yeah, just go with it with a seven dollar super chat. Imagine a world where Canadians want to leave their country. That is actually happening right now. Yeah, and that's it's unbelievable. Um, Canadian Mikey with a five dollar super chat. Uh, Trudeau is a member of the WEF. They want their agenda twenty thirty. You will not own anything, and you will be happy. Trudeau is not stupid. It's an agenda. And we have Brenda Wee with a 279 Super Chat. I've seen people doing that Freeland Twitch. <laughs> now there's a new dance now. Uh, Floppy Sleuth with a 279 Super Chat. As a Latino, I hate the UDI uh, or the uh, Universal Basic Income. Uh, BS, it's all about merit. Yep, 100%. Oh. Or you mean the DEI stuff where oh, maybe, um, yeah. you get they'll prioritize you for certain positions based on what you look like, what your sex is, et cetera. Well, they're using a new term now, racialized. Like it, it's almost like you've had a procedure done to you when you were born. Like it's, it's actually very demeaning that new term. Yeah. So. How about we all just be human and be kind to each other? Yeah. How about, I yeah. don't care what you look like. How about that? Uh, Daniel with his 279 super chat. Twitching is when <laughs> the lies no longer work. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Humble Tracker with 10 Northern Perspective Gifted Memberships. Thank you so much for that. John VV follows up with another 10. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. And um, let's see. We also have uh, Milady Loved Cats following that up with another 10. Thank you very much. And Humble Tracker with another five after that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're 56 away from Larry Brock, everybody. So get uh, those likes up. Uh, Jarsha with a $10 super chat. The Liberals could get rid of Trudeau if they were determined enough. One of the higher profile MPs just needs to start their own uh, Liberal Party with blackjack and hookers. Yes! <laughs> and the rest just cross the floor. Oh, I love the Futurama reference. Thank you. <laughs> well, and this is the thing, right? They, like, they, they really could get rid of him um, because they could literally just say, listen, either you step down or vo we're voting non-confidence and you're out anyway. Like, that's, that's all they would need to do. Well, I mean, if they voted non-confidence against their own party, certainly they would be out of caucus. Like, right. they would be kicked out. So, I mean, I guess it's just a matter of standing up for what's important. Do you, Like uh, Daryl Stinson said, do you have the gonads or the fortitude to do what's necessary? No, I need to get that into a meme. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's it, right? Like... If, if there's any liberal MPs with any ounce of integrity left, like they have supported, f frankly, a, an atrocity that's been uh, committed on our country um, up to now. But if there's any integrity left, stand up in the House of Commons and put some pressure on Trudeau by speaking right into the camera and saying, I don't support this prime minister anymore and I demand he resign. And if a whole bunch of liberals stood up and said that, like, what is Trudeau going to do? Say no? If he did, it gets it's get, it gets far worse for him. So, you know, I would love to see something like that. We're, we never will. But I would love to see that. Um, the Jillian Davis with a $7 super chat. Abortion and made and no other choice because we're broke. Yeah, unfortunately. Maverick uh, Marie, a uh, member for two months with a comment. Is it possible that Trudeau or the Liberals could be charged... Uh, for one of their numerous scandals and uh, that leading to an election call. Sort it's, of. It's, well, it wouldn't lead to an election call, but um, it is possible. It's possible at any time that he could be charged uh, for obstruction of justice in the SNC-Lavalin scandal. What could happen, though, which would lead to an election call, is that, um, and they've done this in the past, is that it like it really heats up surrounding these scandals and something big is coming and they know something big is coming because they're guilty and so they um, either prorogue parliament or they dissolve parliament which means we go to election yep so uh so time will tell and the and the conservatives are pushing hard hard man like uh, i know a lot of you are regular com committee watchers now so you're seeing it in and out of committee uh, 420 hitter with a five dollar super chat. I got called a troll on X, pointing out the carbon tax can't be revenue neutral with the administration costs. PRD, PRD arrangement syndrome is is real on X. Well, and there's a lot of like paid liberal bots on there too. Yeah, a lot. Uh, we get them. We get them from time to time in our posts, um, especially especially our our post of Justin Trudeau not saying anything when the the uh, reporter says yeah so your entire base left you for the conservatives what do you have to say about that <laughs> um yeah. yeah they didn't like that on x did they no 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 well 
a lot of people did, but there's a few people not, that didn't. Yeah, not the trolls. <laughs> and Bubble Avenue with a seven dollar super chat must say it's adorable that Freeland sometimes wears her kids' handmade jewelry to work. I mean, she didn't eat her own young. That's so oh, funny. Oh my goodness. Um, Chauvin Dada with a two dollar super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are eight likes away from Larry Brock, everybody. Eight likes away. And if I'm not mistaken, away. I think you missed a couple super chats. We have Shepard with a 279 super chat. It says, WEF, go watch the, quote, The Great Awakening. Okay. Sounds yes, good. actually, I've, I've heard of that. And Goko Donnie with a $5 super chat. Smash the like. Hello, Brockzilla. Yes, hello, Brockzilla. Are we there yet? And, are we uh, there yet? <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Excellent. Yes, we are. And, you know, I, I thought of something new. So if, if Larry Brock were ever to open his own video store, he would have to call it Brockbuster Video. Yes. Just saying. Before we get to that, though, we have a member comment from the Dutch Tulip, member for two months. It says, Canadians can do more to help the climate by replacing dirty energy with cleaner oil and gas. C Canada needs to prop up Canadians to the best earth position possible. Perfect. And uh, just one more before we get to the video. Diane Sylvain with a $20 super chat. So I saw MP Atwin got her clip compa complaining about the prop that uh, the chair uh, Kelly McCauley's I Love Oil and Gas stickers had went viral on Twitter. It did not go well for her. It's boomerang season. Yes, yeah. I saw that. Vesper shared that with us. It was hilarious. And, you know, I love I love Dr. Ellis because I don't know if he was trolling or if he was serious, but if he was trolling... He is like the most artfully skilled troll I have ever seen because he just didn't break a sweat, didn't seem antagonistic, was just like, well, axe throwing is very popular around here. Like, yeah. like he does such a great job. All right, everybody. As, As promised. We have made you wait long enough. Here is your sneak preview for our interview with the soon-to-be honorable Larry Brock, Member of Parliament for Brantford, Brent. At least from what we've seen so far, the most important piece of evidence that, that we've reviewed is the, the recorded phone call from Michael Wernick and Jody Wilson-Raybould. And in the, uh, the recent committee meeting with Mr. Wernick, um, I believe it was Michael Cooper who referenced the events that happened the day before that conversation took place, where Katie Telford and... Um, uh, Gerald Butts met with uh, Jody, Raybould, Jody Wilson Raybould's chief of staff and essentially said, uh, we're done with all of the legal stuff. This needs to stop. And then the following day, this phone call happens. Thank goodness she recorded it. Do you think that is the smoking gun in this whole situation? The two most powerful at the time, the two most powerful members of the PMO didn't care about the rule of law. What does that say about the integrity of the Justin Trudeau government? There is none. They didn't care what the legalities were. Justin Trudeau, according to uh, Michael Wernick, was in that type of mood. He is going to get this deal done one way or another. And if you didn't follow the rules, clearly reading between the lines, there were going to be consequences. And the consequences were she lost her job. Canada's first female Indigenous Attorney General lost her job because she had the courage to do her job and say no to political pressures exerted by Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister's office, the Clerk of the Privy Council, and other members. It's disgusting. There, so you there go. we go. We hope you like that sneak peek. Yeah, so um, I think uh, I think the audio is only on the left channel on that, um, but uh, don't worry about that. Uh, we're still uh, we're still in the process of editing and uh, uh, and had a kind of a setback because the file I was working on got a, got corrupted. I think so. I had to go to an earlier version where I didn't fix the left and right channels. So, um, but there you go. That's why it's a sneak peek. So it's not done yet. Um, but, um, th these are the type of questions and, uh, that we were asking him. And this is the conversation that, that we had. It was virtually all about SNC Lavalin. Uh, and, uh, he was, 
he was very, very into the conversation. He was great. He was amazing. Yeah. So um, I see a question about the um, the the piece that was on clipped on Brock's T-shirt. That's our lav mic. So that was um, that was his microphone. Whereas we had um, we were obviously sitting behind the cameras and we had our, our regular microphones that we used for um, for podcasting. Yeah. So. Um, we learned some some more lessons about audio <laughs> so. and video, but I you know what for a first time, a first time in person interview like that because last time um, the parliamentary crew took over the AV stuff, um, so the first time that we were in charge of everything and the first time that we did a, a dual camera setup, I think it went amazing. Yeah, I think I was very pleased with how the uh, how the video uh, um, turned out and uh, audio for the most part had to. Do a little bit of editing there, but um, I think everyone's uh, I think uh, I think everyone's going to really enjoy it because um, again, that's one question out of I think ten or eleven or something like that. We we got really in depth with some of the SNC Lavalin stuff, and um, I think people are going to be very pleased with some of the questions that we asked as well as uh, as Mr. Brock's answers. So. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that was worth the wait uh, for 1,100 likes for everybody. Um, Sadly, I don't think it's going to be done for Monday with the crash that we had. No, it will. Um, it oh, will. okay. He says it'll be done Monday. I'm holding you to your word. It'll it'll be done. It'll probably be on on Monday evening. So um, so just just have some faith. Have some faith. <laughs> I will try to make sure that it's out for Monday evening. Um, okay, let's get through a couple of these super chats that came in. So I think Glenn Stewart is first uh, with $10. Thank you very much. Um, I remember watching an interview with Justin Trudeau when he was in college. Uh, I think I remember this one too. He was really young. Uh, he stated Quebec would do better uh, th than than are with the rest of Canada. or I think you mean uh, on their own. In my opinion, he wants a separate Quebec. I'm I'm sure he did that interview. Well, the one I saw, he was in a he was in a debate or something like that, and he was actually advocating against uh, Quebec separating. So uh, maybe I did see a diff different video than uh, than you, Glenn. So that's interesting um, because that was when he was in high school, I believe. The one I saw, uh, Jarsha with a two dollar super chat. Soon to be, he's already as honorable as they come. Well, oh, I guess the he official is, title. He is, but he I mean. gets the official title. So. Um... Just, a, I guess, a little tidbit of information if you're not sure. Um, MPs get the title honorable when they are appointed to the cabinet, and they retain the title of honorable um, even if they are no longer in the cabinet. So you might actually see a few older conservative MPs with the title honorable because they were in Stephen Harper's cabinet. Yep. Uh, Goko Dani with a two dollar super chat. Epic. We're on the right side of history here. You we sure absolutely are. are. Bear Dan Photography. Welcome to MP Supporter. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, Frank with a five dollar uh, super chat. How long was the interview? So it was about forty five minutes. Forty five minutes. Yeah. Um. It was. It was a good long conversation. Yeah. It was great. Um, and uh, it was. It was. It was a conversation. Really, is what it was. So it was. Um, it was. It was surreal. I will say it was surreal yeah. because, um, even though we did the other interview, we were still seeing him on a screen. It was very very surreal being in the same room with them and and asking them these questions but yeah it was really cool because we had gone to the writing and we had gone to the office and and the staff were very kind they showed us in and took us into the conference room where we were going to do the interview and we had our equipment with us and we had to walk past mr brock's office and uh, he just goes you guys look different <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're like yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's the goal <laughs> yeah we 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 you know we don't look exactly like our avatars and as we keep telling our viewers <laughs> and then the next thing he laughed and he goes you're gonna tell me your real names so and we're like yeah oh yeah <laughs> so uh so he's now one of the few that know our real first names and that's about it so there you go um and uh marie Perrin with a two dollar super chat do you think uh, michael cooper uh uh will be independent um i don't think he has any reason to leave the conservative party i don't think so yeah i don't think so um, I think maybe Housefather has a reason to leave the Liberal Party. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think he would leave before Cooper would leave. 
Uh, Diane Sylvain with a $10 super chat. Uh, for folks who don't know, the Justice Minister wears two hats, Mr. Justice Advising Cabinet and Attorney General as the final stop for implementing the rule of law. Absolutely. that's uh, And that's the role that uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, played. She was the Minister of Justice and, uh, and Attorney General. And, Attorney General. Yeah. and she was the first Indigenous lady to do both uh, as well, which is why uh, Trudeau faced a lot of flack over firing her. Uh, never mind kicking her out of cabinet. Uh, Carolyn Grunlin, member for four months. I uh, just want to thank you both for all you do. I'm so glad to have a place to speak my truth without ridicule. Uh, God bless you both and happy Easter. Well, thank you very much, uh, Carolyn. And that's that's what free speech is, is all about. And right? again, um, you know, we may not agree, n- not we as in Cypher and I, I mean, we as in the royal we, like all of us, may not agree with each other all the time, but we have the ability to have a good conversation and try to empathize with the other person and and find out, you know, why do they believe what they believe? Maybe I'll tell them what I believe and why I believe it. And we can find some common ground. Well, I will, I will just go out and say it. We, we as in the collective leave, uh, will never agree on everything. It will not happen. Not if we're being completely honest with ourselves. Right. And why is that? Because we're all, imperfect individual people you know we all have different experiences we all have different upbringing we all have different opinions and we will all have a different take on things and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing the problem is is when you play identity politics then you are playing in a different ball game than everyone is used to in the western world you're playing a communistic type of a uh, type of a ball game because in identity politics and you probably heard this term before it's the identity of the group that is paramount now the problem with that is that when you look at that and if you follow that to completion that leads to group credit group benefits but also group guilt so if someone has decided that you are a member of said group then you automatically get group guilt everyone has probably heard of the term white privilege male privilege or white male privilege so that's identity politics at work you can be a regular caucasian guy just doing your job and and going to work and coming home and According to identity politics, you are automatically guilty for anything that the people that don't like Caucasian males say you're guilty of. And this this is the problem. Well, and the son should not be guilty for the sins of the father. Um, I mean, you guys know I've said it before. Part of my family is Italian. That family fought on the wrong side of the war. Like, I have... I am descended from soldiers who fought on that side of the war. You know, is that my fault? No, I wasn't even born yet. How am I supposed to be responsible for that? But with these these Marxist identity politics, the left would have you believe that that's my fault. Right. Now, if somebody commits a crime and if someone is being, a, a you know, an ob- like a complete racist person, then yeah, I will stand shoulder to shoulder with the people that are fighting against that. Absolutely. But... I'm not going to try to get rid of racism by practicing racism. I'm not going to do that. You know, we need to be following the rule of law in the country. And if somebody has been demonstrated to have committed a crime, then they should be punished accordingly. Not before. Um, Murray Perrin with a $2 super chat. Uh, ah, Mentel's father. Too many Michaels. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of Michaels and there's also a lot of Johns, I've noticed, um, especially in the conservative party. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Trish Pro with a $2 super chat. Uh, are your real names Boris? <laughs> Boris and Natasha. No, they are not. <laughs> You know, we have this been, is not the real accent. <laughs> we have been accused of being like Russian spies and stuff before, so that's just that's hilarious. Yes, to me. my my name would be Yuri. <laughs> uh, Yuri Noring, Yuri Noring, yeah. Uh, uh, Justin Galinsky. Uh, the one thing that upsets me is that uninformed Canadians receiving a carbon rebate will find themselves loving their corrupted government, blinded by the money. Well, the good thing is, is that. Canadians, like 40, between 40 and 42% of Canadians, they've already woken up to that fact. 
because they are polling to support the conservatives and the general feeling out there is that is a underrepresentation of of what canadians are actually feeling because it's just a sample size right so i wouldn't be too worried about that uh uh justin galinsky member for four months thank you for sticking with us and the next one uh youtube is really playing with us tonight um cast awakening with a five dollar super chat hey guys your thoughts on the state of emergency being in place for niagara and military being called in for the eclipse stay out of niagara yeah um, unless you live there stay out of there yeah so we were actually supposed to go down um my nursing friend you guys have heard me talk about her invited me down to that region to um you know observe the eclipse with her and her kids and 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 her husband and and we said, no, we're not going to go down there because, A, it's too far of a drive. And, B, it's going to be even farther with all these people going down to Niagara. Um, and, and they just declared a state of emergency. Like, So we don't want to be in traffic for for hours and probably miss the eclipse because... Because we're stuck in traffic. Yeah, so... Like, um, it, it's a... It's a long drive on a regular day, never mind when, el when everybody else is trying to get down there, too. Yeah, so, um, so it's... It's, it's crazy because they're expecting like thousands and thousands and thousands of people down there. Probably the, the most they've had uh, over and above any uh, any New Year's Eve celebration, which I know Niagara is, is known for. So um, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I would just say you just stay out of Niagara. But there's like a huge area where the path of totality is from what I understand. Like it's not just Niagara Falls. Yeah, Niagara Falls has the longest uh the longest actual actual eclipse that's why everyone is going there so even even though places like to the west and to the east are, are still in the path of totality the the estimate is niagara has it for like two minutes or something like that or maybe it's a bit longer um lost uh, labradorian with a two dollar super jet love your show and i watch committee on your show excellent always a good decision just like samuel adams <laughs> uh okay and goko Dani with five dollar super chat tamara leach for governor general yes there you go. absolutely uh gerald henning with a 279 super chat love you guys oh, well thank, thank you. you very much and that's your first uh super chat on the live stream thank you uh and i think that's all so um i think uh i think we got through most of the things okay so um barnaby's, good, barnaby's got some questions barnaby's for us. taking questions so uh tag barnaby with your questions and he will push them up to us yep because uh, we're going to get into those very shortly you don't need a super chat for them uh 420 hitter with two dollar super chat bc pays the most in carbon tax and has no rebates there you go Yikes. Uh, don't vote ndp that's all i have to say there uh okay so first question from floody boy what are your thoughts on freely announcing today the government is covering free contraceptives looks like pharmacare will be in the budget could you look it up well, it's, we'll see i don't think we have the budget available to us yet they're releasing it or they're tabling it to the house on april the 16th yes um so i don't believe we have that like access to that information yet but um the way freeland just dodges questions about uh the pharmacare and the budget like the pharmacare as it relates to the budget it makes me very suspicious and i wonder if it's gonna be in there at all yeah um so we will see we will see exactly what's in there remember they they always say uh one thing and then when you actually dig into it it looks completely different so we'll see um johannes johnston with a question uh, can Turdo's fiscal assets be forfeited to the crown if he is charged and convicted of a criminal code offense? It depends I, on how he obtained. Yeah. That. So if he got the funds as unlawfully like, from a crime, like say for example, he robbed a bank and stole two million dollars, could they get that two million dollars back? Potentially, yes, because yeah. it was the direct result of a crime, from what I understand. Now, neither Cipher nor I are lawyers, but that's kind of our basic understanding of it. Uh, short sack with a two dollar super chat eclipse point. Uh, please close your blinds for your pets. Good, yes. good advice. That's a really, yeah, that's really smart. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you. Uh, Shepherd with a fourteen dollar super chat. I agree with you guys on the racism card. He's a Here's a great line from Lerman Frigate. It's a great clip. I know the exact one you're talking about. Uh, was asked once how to stop racism. Best answer ever. His answer is stop talking about that. You know, I'm going to see if I can get that quickly. 
Um, so Fox, if you want to keep going with the questions. Sure. Um, I have a question from Jordan McKinnon. This one's a good one. It says, what are the rules and requirements to watch the House of Commons in Ottawa in person? So first of all, you need to contact your MP or MP's office and they will set you up with a visitor pass to go to Ottawa and attend the House of Commons and sit in the gallery. Um, to be in the gallery, let me see. There's, there's no talking while votes are going on that I remember and I don't think they like you talking in general if you're sitting in the gallery like you have to just sit there and be quiet um you're not permitted electronic devices of any kind in the gallery so no cameras no cell phones no tablets like you can't have anything out you're also not permitted to have like pen and paper or anything that you could write on or anything that you could be reading from so there are very strict rules once you're actually in the gallery um but to get there in the first place, you need to contact your MP's office. Um, let's see. We also have a question from Marie Perrin. It says, when is the next committee meeting on SNC and GC strategies? I believe there's a couple coming up this week. Um, do you know Cypher off the top of your head? Um, so there is an ArriveCan meeting coming up. We're probably going to be live streaming that. Um, in terms of... Um, the next committee meeting with GC strategies that is unknown at this point but I would not be surprised if there's going to be further meetings scheduled by the ethics committee on SNC Lavalin um, as they have summoned some witnesses uh, to uh, to committee so um, I'm, I'm gonna guess a couple of weeks for the next SNC one and we're gonna try and follow both um, as long as you know we're not having like four live streams every every week that's that's too much. <laughs> um, so, so just looking at the calendar, Wednesday, April 3rd is... That's the Arrive Can one. Yeah, Arrive Can in PACP, which I believe is public accounts. Correct. Correct. Um, and then, uh, do they have another one? That's all they have scheduled at yeah, this point. Yeah, that's it so, so far. All right. So um, so thank you very much for uh, for reminding us of the uh, of that clip, Shepard. I found it. Now, this is a very old 60 Minutes clip. It just shows how old Morgan Freeman is. But um, it's if you have, you've probably seen this. But if you haven't, this is this is something else. Black History Month, you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? <laughs> no, well, no, no, come on. Tell me. Well, the, I'm Jewish. Okay. Which I'm month Jewish. is Jewish History Month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh. Oh. Why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no. No. I, 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 I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? And stop so talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace. You know me as Morgan Freeman. You're I really hate it when people decide to put their own spin on these things. Um, that's what happens when we can't like preview clips and we'll do it <laughs> yeah. on the fly. <laughs> we get weird stuff thrown in. Yeah, so apologies for that, but um, you get the gist of it, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to stop calling me a black man. And I'm going to stop calling you a white man. And that's it. Like, stop. And, uh, and, and, and that's it. And what Morgan Freeman has, has been preaching, say I say preach, but trying to explain to, uh, to especially young men is that, listen, you want proof that anyone of any color can get anywhere? Look at me. I'm your proof. Look at who is president of, of, of the United States. There's your proof. Stop whining about it and get to work life is hard so get used to it it is what it is 
You're not going to get free handouts your whole life. Decide on what you want and go and get it. Like, I came from a very, very poor household. I had to pay for all my own schooling. I was in, you know, tremendous amounts of debt. I didn't complain about it. <laughs> I got it done. And I had to take gas station jobs. I had to work at, you know, part-time at Radio Shack. I had to work at part-time at, uh, you know, silly fairs now and then. But you just... What I didn't do is I didn't do what a lot of young people do on spring break was take a trip to Florida or take a trip anywhere. Never did that. Why? Because I was busy working. So you, you get it done. And the, the sooner people would just take responsibility for their own lives and realize that you shouldn't be relying on any handouts and just get it done, the sooner you're going to have some sort of success in this life. If you make good decisions, you get an education, and you wait until you're married to have kids, your odds, your odds of staying in the middle class before Trudeau destroyed it are actually really, really high. So that's what that's that's all it comes down to, folks. Uh, and agree or disagree, that's that's been my experience in my life. And everyone that I know that came from similar situations, they made good good, good decisions and were responsible. Off, oh, that's that's all there is to it. Uh, John Gauthier with a five dollar super chat. I live in Niagara region. We are expecting over one million people to see the eclipse, and the duration is to be just over three minutes. Okay, thank you very much for wow, that, John. that's like, what, half the size of Toronto or a third of the size of Toronto, like going to Niagara Falls all at the same time? Yep. <laughs> that's insane. That's why we're not going. Uh, Daryl Campbell with a $10 super chat. Have you guys watched the Bill Wilson, Pierre Trudeau uh, YouTube clip yet? I see someone else uh, mentioned it the last time. Love you guys and the NP family. Can you guys uh, show the clip here in chat for everybody? Uh, I have to find it. Um, I will see what I can do. Um, and I think uh, we got a couple more super chats. So if uh, Fox, you want to take a look at those and I'll see what I can find. Sure. Um, we have Mighty Mouse with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much. It says there's a lot of race hustlers. It's big business, especially in the US. Love you guys. Happy Easter. Yeah, I, I have seen I guess what you would call race hustlers like on TV or on the internet coming out of the US and it does seem like it's big business. And I think it's, I don't know, it's it's kind of horrible to do that to people, you know, to say certain things about a certain group of people because they're gonna give you money. Like, I don't know, that's not cool. So um, let me just ask you, um, uh, Mr. Campbell, is it where, uh, Bill Wilson was telling Pierre uh, Trudeau that he wants his daughter to be prime minister. Is that uh, just let me know if that's the one that you're talking about? Um, okay, and uh, you said you read the one from Mighty Mouse, mm -hmm. Michelle Champagne. Uh, not yet. Uh, so Michelle Champagne with a five dollar super chat. Morgan Freeman is right and very smart, great man. Yeah, and Absolutely. Denzel Washington actually has some some good thoughts on it as well. Um, where, you know, a lot of people will blame, you know, the police for, uh, for young African Americans being put in jail. And, uh, Denzel Washington's comment to that is where was his father? That's, that's basically what he's saying. He's, he's like, you know, th like the police don't just show up at a nine year olds or a 12 year olds ho house and just arrest them. Something happened for that that young boy to get involved with the wrong people in order to commit a crime in the first place. And his question is, is where is the boy's father? And sometimes the answer is, well, his father was in jail. Okay. Well, where was that guy's father? Right? So Denzel Washington has a message of strong home and parental responsibility, especially when it comes to, to, to fathers in terms of um, why their kids end up in a criminal lifestyle. So, uh, so there's some great, great thoughts on that as well. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to find Mr. Campbell's response. I don't see it yet. Uh, okay. So we have, uh, Christine May with a $2 super chat. Life is hard. Wear helmets. Love this channel. Bingo. Bingo. 
I forgot about that <laughs> that quote. Thank you. And Casper H with 10 Gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Great to see you, Casper. Thank you very much for your support as always. And Mike Mahoney with a $10 super chat. Uh, thank you very much for that. And Did go you get this one from Gerald Henning or Hennig? Uh, da, 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 da. You know, I looked at that and I went right by it. So go ahead and read that one first. Sure. I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, so this is from Gerald. It says, I wrote Lib NDP about the carbon tax and finance and my 30-year-old back home. He wrote back, remember Diefenbacher days? Two parties joined. That's how they got med done. NDP do zero cents. Canada now two-party conservative and not. Goodbye, NDP. Yeah, that's pretty much what they've done to to Canada is, is they've made this coalition, this this new party. I don't know why they don't just like officially merge the parties and then let themselves get annihilated by the conservatives because they're not working in the interest of Canadians. Okay, and the next one. Um, this is from Gokudani. It says, I'd pay cash bucks to watch Mr. Freeman and Mr. Sowell tackle today's problems in debate. The left can pick their victims. Oh, that'd be great. That would be great. Uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, but Thomas Sowell, very, very smart uh, economist. Um, very well respected as well. And thank you to Shepard with the 699 Super Chat. This is another one, uh, another good one from Denzel Washington. You watch the news, you are misinformed. You don't watch the news, you are uninformed. And where is father? Yes, yes. And that's... Um, that's, I think, one of the ones that uh, that I was talking about. I think he says that as well. Um, and uh, it's it's interesting in, in his commentary on mainstream media. So, and it was uh, it wasn't like last year or anything. It was it was a number of years ago, I, I believe. So, um, uh, Debbie Clark with a two dollars super chat. Uh, happy Easter to all. Absolutely, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Happy Easter. And Brian Letwinak with a five dollars super chat. Hey guys, happy Easter. What's your take on Kevin O'Leary and his view on politics? Just curious. Kevin O'Leary likes to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> he's a bit of a narcissist himself. So um, I don't always think he's wrong. Like no, when he, he says that Trudeau's an idiot governing a very rich country or however he phrased it, <laughs> he's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. When he says that, um, you know, Canada, it could be one of the richest countries on the planet. And the problem is it's being, it's being governed by an idiot. He is 100% right. Like, again, it, it's one of these things where we don't, I don't agree with Kevin O'Leary a lot of times, but... In that case, yeah, I absolutely agree with him. Like at one point, he said he wanted to run for leader of the Conservative Party. I don't think he has what it takes to no. be the leader of a party. I think he is too abrasive. Um, because in a politician, you want somebody who's going to create good policy, but also is personable. Yep. And it's somebody who has to know when to be abrasive and when not to on the world stage. You know, like Pierre. Yeah. Um, Price Cloud with a two dollars super chat. U.S. citizen is cons uh, is conservationism only a thing in the U.S.? No. <laughs> yeah, just uh, talk to our environment minister. Um, but I guess it depends on on what you mean. If if you mean more of like environmental fanaticism, if that, if that's what you mean, then yeah, you know that's definitely a thing up here. But um, there are you know there are huge swaths of Canada that are designated as national parks for some reason um like in the middle of nowhere there, there's national parks now in some cases it's to protect a specific species whether it be you know an animal or a bird or, or a type of tree that you know maybe only indigenous to that area and there's not too much many left that makes sense but there's a lot of areas in canada that are designated national parks for unknown reasons at least to the general public well, and there's in Ontario, in southern Ontario, in the GTA, which is very densely populated, they decided to um, just designate a bunch of land as Greenbelt, and you're not allowed to build on it. And when Doug Ford tried to change what the Greenbelt was, everybody got really upset, and they couldn't do it. But we're in a housing crisis. We need homes. Yeah. And so if, if you can make something the Greenbelt, you can also unmake it the Greenbelt. Right. Now, maybe that's a, a very uninformed opinion that I have, but... There you go. There it is. <laughs> uh, and Daryl Campbell with the two dollars super chat. Yes, that is the clip I was talking about. Good because here it is. Mister, Mister, Mister Chairman, uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, 
I'm informed by the, uh, the government of British Columbia that one of them could be out here on a plane this evening. <laughs> There you go. It's 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 amazing. Jody really takes after her father's eyes. Like like she she yeah she looks like her dad. Definitely has her father's eyes. So um, uh, and it's it's funny, you know. Um, what was Trudeau looking at? Because they didn't have smartphones back then. What was he looking at? Could it just been like paper or something? I guess, just. His crossword puzzle, like who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe he was like, "Should I name him Gerald? No. Should I name him Fidel? No. Should I name him Justin? Yeah, Justin, that's the name. That's the so one. Let's circle that one. So you know, maybe that's what he was doing. But um, anyway, emotional damage. That's what he was born with. That's for darn sure. Okay, let's get into some more questions. Thank you for the clip suggestion. Um, Flying Beaver member comment. Um, I second the motion for Tamara to be the next Governor General. There you go. Um, at some point, Tamara's going to visit us. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll do a live stream with her when, when she comes here. But uh, uh, rumor has it that's going to be late in the spring. So fingers crossed that happens. And we can't wait to for that to happen if you're watching Tamara. Craig Robertson, what do you think the Liberals were thinking uh, their point of orders at the Premier's hearing would accomplish? Do you think it, it uh, do they think it doesn't look shady? Uh, shady is Hades and... Um, deliberately obtuse. And deliberately obtuse. Yeah, so I think their goal was to try to try to shut down the meeting yeah, I think it was a delay tactic or a filibuster. Yeah. It, so I was reading after watching that uh, last night because we wanted to do a clip about committee, but of course we couldn't get past the intro because it was so insane. So I had looked up what um, what happens. In committee, they can't kick out the offending party. Like if one of the MPs is being extra spicy and, and just won't shut up, um, they can't kick them out. The chair can call them to order and they can suspend the committee until they're able to gain the order of, of the committee or they can end the committee. So I don't know if maybe that was their goal was just to get to be like so riled up and to cause so much trouble that Kelly McCauley would have to uh, end the the committee meeting again yeah yeah i don't know if that was their goal um but they were definitely trying to filibuster to limit the time that um that both daniel smith and and blaine higgs would would be able to speak i think specifically blaine higgs as has been suggested in the chat um, because blaine higgs has been a cause of many of the problems that the that the liberals have been having across the country um, you know, in, in terms of speaking out on the carbon tax, in terms of speaking out and uh, changing the uh, the school policies as it relates to um, gender identity, parent, yeah. parents of gender identity changes in, in the schools and that sort of thing. So, um, so I think they just they wanted to rail against Blaine Higgs as much as possible, and and that's somehow try and prevent him from speaking but it didn't work and as for how it looks yeah it looks terrible and that's why we released that as just its own episode because that was literally not even the start of the meeting the meeting hadn't started yet it only starts really when uh when blaine higgs makes his opening statement like technically i guess you could say it started because um kelly opened the meeting but nothing had even happened within the first 20 minutes, it was just all liberal filibustering, point of ordering and all the rest of it. So it was pretty, pretty sad. Um, so uh, anyhow, we have Josh with a $2 super chat. My motion is to make Kelly McCauley speaker. Well, I think he'd probably be runner up to Chris Dontremont uh, because Chris Dontremont has been basically speaker in waiting um, as he has been deputy speaker for a number of years now. So. It's probably going to be Chris Dontremont, which I, he is a very fair speaker. Um, I will 
Yeah, he's really good. Well, yeah, he's I'll... really good. We actually had heard this is kind of like inside knowledge, so we won't tell you who it came from, but that Don Tremont was going to be the next speaker when Rhoda resigned, and um, the Liberals were pushing for Fergus instead. Yes, so that kind of happened out of left field, and then we because all know he was what the happened. obvious choice. He yeah. was the one who had been deputy speaker for a, a significant length of time, and. Fergus just came out of nowhere. He had zero experience in a nonpartisan environment. So he was never chair of any committees. He was never deputy speaker. Um, and, and we've all seen how he is a speaker as a result. Yeah, typically the path to become speaker is to be demonstrating yourself in a nonpartisan role, such as Fox said, like uh, as a chair of a, uh, uh, of a committee for a significant amount of time. And then, you know, you, you may choose to move into the deputy speaker role. And then at that point, it's fairly fairly obvious right well because the chairs of these committees like kelly mccauley or john brassard for example when they sit in that chair they're not conservative anymore they are the chair of the ogo committee for example so they are expected to operate in a non-partisan way and typically they do yeah the Um, only time that changes is if there is a tie in a vote when it comes to uh, a motion in committee and in that regard the chair breaks the tie with the vote and that's it but as fox said otherwise they are not they're not supposed to be acting in any partisan fashion whatsoever so and that's how you know a good chair because they don't act in a partisan fashion Mm -hmm. uh glenn stewart the five dollar super chat algonquin park was set aside as a tribute to the uh, tribe of the same name it sure was and uh funny enough uh Oh, no, I'm thinking of Muskoka. <laughs> I'm thinking of the wrong place. And Algonquin is huge, man. Yeah, it, it is. is it's, isn't it the biggest national park in the world or something? Uh, I don't it's know. It's the biggest in Canada, for sure. I don't know. Gerald Hennig with a $7 super chat. Kevin O'Leary sends everything to China for not made in Canada. Boo, Kevin O'Leary. Well, again, he, he's only interested in making money. So if he can make things cheap in China, that's where he's going to send them. Um Spiky Mikey 33 of the $5 Super Chat. I was waiting for Kelly to pull out some buck repellent. <laughs> they were like a swarm of bees. Kelly handled that very he well. He did handle that very well. Yeah. Oh, Tamara Leach with a $14 Super Chat. Hello, I've never thought, thought of Governor General before. Uh, great idea. I'm really looking forward to being a guest on your stream. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Can't wait to have you. Can't wait to have you. Um, and uh, I think uh, I think we need to have a follow-up phone call, Tamara, from our last one. Um, maybe I'll give you a ring in, in a day or two. Uh, Kurt and Denise with a $20 super chat. I don't know why, but every time we come on to watch a Northern Perspective live stream, I'm reminded of the meme where the elites are playing chess on the backs of the people, and the caption reads, the game is over if we all stand up. I haven't seen that meme, but it sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. That Yeah, that sounds like... I don't know how to describe it. It's like, a great a good metaphor. visual. Yeah. It's a great metaphor. A really good visual. Uh, Brenda Weeb with a 279 Super Chat. He voted for it. Why squawk now? All of them. Yeah. Uh, that's the uh, that's the magical question, right? Okay. I think that's all of them. Um, I have a question from Carolyn Gronland. It says, do you guys think that 8 out of 10 people that benefit from the carbon tax or are the poor seems the only possibility even then it's doubtful? Well, we know that that 8 out of 10 people is incorrect because... Yeah, we think they cherry-picked their data to reflect the numbers that they wanted to reflect, right? Well, yeah, so what they did is they only took into account the average cost that they estimated of Canadians paying for gas in cars and home, home heating. heating and that's, um, probably, that's it. probably it yeah that's probably it so they didn't take into account and this is where the parliamentary budget office came into play they didn't take into account all of the indirect carbon tax costs that you pay for food that you pay for clothes that you pay on any goods or services that you buy that you pay on planes that you may take that you may pay Um, as it relates to taxis or any of that type of transportation or any other indirect cost. And in that case, over 60% of Canadians are worse off when it comes to the carbon tax. Is it over 60 or is it over 80? It's a lot of us, most of us, definitely most of us. Well, this is is what the parliamentary budget officer said in the, uh, uh, in, in, in committee. So I'm just going on the low number, right? So it's far, far less than what the what the liberals are actually saying 
And Don Boulay, did you ask Brock if he will conduct an investigation of who profited off their stock portfolio during uh, the COVID and the Ukraine? No, we spoke specifically about the SNC Lavalin, and that was it. Once I had turned the camera off, I asked quickly about Bill S or sorry uh, C sixty three, um, and was given a little bit of information very very briefly about that. But the focus of the interview was uh, SNC Lavalin. Yeah. Uh, Floody Boy, did you see Jag Meats possibly telling social media post from yesterday about an early election? Time will soon come for JT and PP to start up their good old election tapes. Look it up. Interesting. Can we get Twitter up and going? Uh, let's see. Um, Do you want me to read the next one in the meantime? Yeah. Okay. So this question is from Skyfire. It says, if BC votes out the NDP next election, will the carbon tax be axed like the rest of the country? That I honestly don't know because um, from what I understand, the BC carbon tax is at the provincial level. Um, we're in Ontario and we're suffering under the federal one because Ontario doesn't have its own. Um, that could be something that you could write both your MP and MPP, or uh, I think they call them MLAs out in BC. Um, and you can ask them that question and I'm sure they'll be able to provide you with an answer. Uh, we have a question from new member, Bear Den, the Bear Den Photography, sorry about that. Uh, it says, why do we have to put a label on everything in this world? That's the problem. That really is the problem. Why can't we all just be human? Right? The end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Ms. J. McDowell, member for one month. It says, couldn't we insist that elected officials go through drug screening? We expect police, fire, etc. to be drug tested. These people are running our country. They shouldn't be under the influence. That's a really good point. Um, I don't really know the laws in regards to drug testing for an occupation. Um, but I, I would suspect that they have to prove that you need to be sober for your job. So, for example, like truck drivers or taxi drivers um, or police because you have to think on your toes, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know if they could make the argument that politicians need to be drug free, but I agree 100% that they should be, if that makes sense. I have another question from Trevor W. It says, did you guys see the clip from the African president of Guyana giving the BBC reporter an earful? No, we haven't. No, maybe that's something we can look up after the stream. Um, we have Floody Boy with a question. It says, is it true that you're going to release a special video slash content once the election is called? I thought I remembered you saying that, but I'm not sure. Yes. Okay, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what we're talking about, but Cipher clearly knows. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's related to uh, to Jowan. Oh, okay. There is going to be a, a special video that we're going to Make. hope it goes viral. All right. And not for any, and not for any benefit specifically for ourselves, but it's for the benefit of Canadians. Canadians. And we have Craig Robertson with a question. It says, Northern Perspective, what do you think happens if this government tries to hold on despite solid criminal evidence seeing public light? Um, I think if they are able to prove that the, um, the Prime Minister, I almost called him the Prime Minister, oh my goodness, that the Prime Minister has committed uh, crime while in office and he refuses to step down and stays in office, I, I think that's going to be a really, really bad look for the Liberal Party. Whatever few seats they can expect to win in the next election are going to be gone entirely. So I don't know, again, the legality of removing him from office if he's found to have committed a criminal act or if they arrest him while he's in office because this has never been done before. Uh, we have a, another question from Floody Boy. It says, have you seen that 22 minutes video of that non quote unquote comedian liberal named Dan that rated Pierce Halifax interview? If not, could we watch it together? We did see that and we were thoroughly unimpressed. I don't even want to give that guy any airtime, to be honest. Yeah. We, it the, was so terrible. Yeah. It was just cringeworthy. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really, really bad. It was tacky. Like, I don't know. You don't crash an in like an event like that i don't know if if we were to go to another event of peers which we have in the past 
Um, and, you know, we told him that we were from Northern Perspective, but we didn't have cameras all up in his face or anything like that. We weren't acting obnoxious and rude. Um, you just, you don't do that. No, no, it's like, very rude. It's like guerrilla media tactics. Like, it's just, it's gross. Well, and the thing about that, right, is that um, they had so much time to prepare for that. They, they you know, they were the ones that knew what was going to happen. And what the guy actually said it was it was it wasn't funny um and uh it just it made them look really childish and petty like it i remember watching two, 22 minutes this hour 22 minutes when it used to be funny i i don't know what happened liberal government i don't know um anyway uh the good news is is i found that social media post so it wasn't on twitter it was actually on facebook um not sure why he did that, but um, here it is. That. There we go. So, um, time will soon come for Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev to start up their old, good old election tapes, but remember their balance sheet. At every turn, they disappointed. They found reasons not to do what they promised to do. I am not Justin Trudeau nor Pierre Polyev because I will never let you down. Is he Rick Astley? Never going to leave? Yeah. <laughs> no, because Rick Astley was cool. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be different for the for the liberals because he's like always going to prop you up, never going to bring you down. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe maybe we should do a cover for uh, Jagmeet Singh uh, over Rick Ashley. No, I can't sing. (laughs) So uh, anyway, um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh my! Oh my! Um, Okay, a couple super chats came in. Probably one of them is going to be like, "Never let Cipher sing again." Uh, (laughs) And you would be right to ask that. Um, Let's see if I can switch views here. Okie dokie. So, Daryl Campbell with the $5 Super Chat. If you think about it, we could apply Morgan Freeman's thinking to a lot of social issues we have today. Love to hear your and everyone's thoughts on that. Yes, it literally should be how everyone views everybody in society all the time. And not just about race, but about other defining characteristics. Like, we should we should learn to just, as corny as this sounds, get along with one another. Yes, we're going to have differences, but... Just be kind. That's like all you need to do. Just and, be kind. And everyone seems to forget, not this crowd, but everyone seems to forget that that's the way Canada was about 20 years ago. It was. Just Growing saying. up, that's how it was. Just saying. Yeah, there's going to be idiots and, 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 and jerks in life. But for the majority of cases, it you didn't care. You just went through life. Didn't matter. Um, so it should should be applied literally at every level. Don't care what you make. Don't care what you do. Don't care where you came from. I'm going to just treat you like I would anybody else. Um, Dudu with a $5 super chat. No, the carbon tax here in BC is permanent. It's different from other provinces and often goes into general revenue. Well, that's the problem. Gotcha. Right? Uh, Michael Heffling, member for two months. Liberals using the 8 out of 10 stat isn't the problem. Uh, they only talk about how much the rebate gives people, but never about how much it costs. It's deceptive. Well, it's both, right? Because, um, uh, and that's where Pierre always brings up what the cost is, because he refers to the parliamentary budget office, and it, when they say it does cost more, so um, it, now, if they literally had um, uh, any uh, any sort of response to it, then they would have given it, right? When Pierre says, "Oh, you know, uh, well." It, it costs more here. If they had a response, they had a rebuttal, they would rebut it, but they don't. Um, not sure if we missed this one. Uh, Gokodani with a $5 super chat. I'd pay cash bucks to watch uh, Mr. Freeman. Oh, no. Yes, we did. Uh, I remember that was Mr. Soul. So, my bad. Uh, lady Loves Cats with a $7 super chat. Libs did uh, did the same during Premier Moe's appearance. Same as when Higgs and Smith appeared. Seems they were all on different days. Yeah, they were. And in that one, um, Kelly actually shut down the, the, the meeting because... Oh, that's the one he was talking about. Yeah. Um, so that he waited until after the witnesses finished, but then there was a motion raised. And when, when debate had started, 
the liberals were being stupid. So he just said, fine, meeting's over. And yeah. the chair has prerogative if there is excessive disruptions in the meeting to do that. Yeah, because unfortunately, as I stated earlier, the chair is not permitted to kick members out, but he can shut down the meeting if uh, if he can't call them to order. Yeah. Uh, Dan Demand 966 with a $5 super chat. If the Liberals don't have Pharmacare in the financial budget, could Jag Mead uh, pull the plug and claim that he brought down the Liberals? Yes. He could, but in my opinion, he should have done that already. Well, that's his problem, right? Um, if that is his strategy... Or if like he's forcing that strategy, he, he has lost so much momentum. Well, I don't want to say that ship has sailed because technically anything's still possible, but now is not the time to do it. You should have done it back at the beginning of Which March. means it's the, probably, the time where he's probably... Yeah, of course, to. because this guy just does not do anything logical. Yeah, and, and not according to uh, to strategy. Uh, and we even, we even, you know, through our our idea or our thoughts on that you know to to a conservative mp and and he said yeah um strategically i completely agree with 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 you both but from what we've seen for the ndp they don't seem to follow the laws of common sense so uh so there you are canadian mikey with a ten dollar super chat what are your thoughts on the liberals making the next election one week later so their mps can collect pensions which will uh i hear will cost us over well, it's not $100 million, but it's millions of dollars. Um, um, at first, I'll admit that I had heard it and went, oh, it's Diwali that Monday. Okay, no problem. Like, that that makes sense why it's delayed. And then came out the news that all these MPs will qualify for their pensions if it's made one week later. And I was like, aha, that's the real reason. So he, that's the real reason. And he's going under the guise that it's for Diwali. Well, and I guess the last election was held on a Jewish holiday and the liberals and didn't care cared. there. Yeah. So again, that's the real reason is the pension thing. But um, the MPs do pay into their pension fund. Um but it will end up costing taxpayers more in the long run. So it's not like they're just getting a free ride, like they do pay into it, but it does cost the taxpayers with all these additional ones potentially getting their pensions. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Mouse with a $5 super chat. Uh, Pierre, uh, derangement syndrome is real. I hope it doesn't get as bad as uh, uh, what they're doing to Trump. Well, um, I think Pierre and, Pierre and Trump aren't really comparables. Yes, uh, yes, they have, well here's the thing trump used to be a, a democrat and then when it was convenient then he became a republican so um so they're 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 very different people and um pierre has also kept his nose very clean um trump like him or hate him he's had some shady business dealings in the past the issue well even is, his family life is a nightmare right? yeah it's a disaster <laughs> but you know here here's my point about trump if you were going to charge Trump with anything, you should have done it a long time ago. The only reason now the optics looks like that you're, you're doing it now is to try and prevent him from becoming president, which is a terrible look. So, you know, all you've really demonstrated is that there's a two-tier uh, justice system of conveniency in the United States, and that's a big problem. Um, Tony Jurassic with a seven dollar super chat. After the next election, can you do a video of all the Liberal MPs going under Hunger Games style with the sound of the cannon? Yes, I bet oh, we could do that. That's an um, excellent idea. Cypher likes those those uh, movies, those, so I'm sure we could uh, arrange that somehow. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I'll figure that out. That's a great. Uh, that's a good celebratory idea. thing. I'm gonna have to write. Sorry, we're gonna write your name down so that we know who to thank in T the future. Tony Jurassic, there you go. <laughs> Great ideas. Uh, Goko Dani with a $5 super chat. Everything changed after losing Red Green and uh, Royal Canadian Air Force. Just my opinion. I don't necessarily disagree with you, uh, Donnie. I don't I don't uh, disagree with you at all. Uh, Brendan, we with a $7 super chat. Your MP or, or, or not ask why they squawk about the carbon tax, but voted for it in the House. When did the Conservatives vote for a carbon tax? Yeah, I, I don't recall them voting for it. Yeah, I don't. Again, I could be mistaken, but if you know the vote number, um, you can drop it in chat and we'll take a look. Yeah, we can look it up. Um, what, uh, what the Conservatives did do was in the previous, previous uh, election was a uh, campaign with a price on pollution, but it wasn't uh, at the consumer level. Um, yeah, it was meant for industry, which again, filters down to the consumer, but it wouldn't have been 
not that I agree with it. I don't, I don't think it was a good idea, but it wouldn't have been as severe as this version of the carbon tax, which hits the consumer on all levels. Oh, Brenda is saying I'm not talking uh, the conservatives. Okay. Okay. We misunderstood your, 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 your question. Uh, our apologies for that, Brenda. Um, uh, the, the MP that we were talking to was a conservative. Maybe that's where the confusion lies there. So, um, but we do, uh, we do hope to be talking to, um, non-conservative MPs because we do want to get other perspectives and get their, uh, thoughts on some of the stuff going on. Um, uh, so apologies for that, Brenda, but, uh, to your point, we will ask that question <laughs> uh, because uh, absolutely um, that uh, that should be a question that they need to be asked. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Daniel with a uh, uh, question. Um, how quickly will our natural resources development start once the conservatives are elected? Well, it won't start the next day. But what you will see them do is start introducing legislation to open up um, open up the regulations and put in legislation to decrease the time that it actually takes to get permits to actually go in while maintaining the environmental controls and standards. Um, the problem is it takes far too long to actually green light mines and, and all of this stuff. Um, so they don't want to decrease the uh, the consideration for the environment, which we can all agree on, they want to drastically decrease the time it takes to actually get permits out. So it is going to take some time. Um, probably like with all the legislation that they need to put in to fix everything, it's going to take years, unfortunately, but they will get there at some point, but good question. Um, and Saharsh uh, Bawankar, uh, member for one month. Recently, uh, I am seeing a poster and stickers of Revolutionary Communist Party around GTA area, especially I saw one today in the ghost station. Are you guys aware of it? Um, there is a Communist Party that is a registered political party here in Canada. Um, I don't know if that's them. There's also a Marxist-Leninist Party that's a registered party here in Canada, registered political party. There's many different political parties. Um, so, well, yeah, so unfortunately it could be one of them. I, I don't know. but yeah. uh, um, they, they would be in the minority though. And hey, look at it this way. If people are voting for them, then they're not voting for the NDP or the, the Liberals. So they get their own split vote. Um, Colette Van, uh, Van Bodegum, uh, welcome to NP supporter. Thank you very much. Marie Perrin with a $2 super chat. Problem will be Quebec with oil and gas. Could be, could be. There's a lot of oil and gas in there. And no name, nobody man. Uh, would the RCMP contact anyone in government before arresting APM or just do it unannounced? Um, Don't know, because I suppose if they think he's a flight risk, maybe they, they wouldn't say anything. I would imagine they would try to do it at his residence as opposed to in Parliament. But again, this has never, ever happened before in our country's history. So we really don't know. Yeah, so it's unprecedented, really. So... Um... Imagine if they had to revoke the passport of the prime minister. That would be something. That would be weird. Uh, Jordan McKinnon with a suggestion. Um, uh, Barnaby, you should tell Cypher and Fox the official song of the Liberal Party should be Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Sweet Little Lies by Fleetwood Mac. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't think uh, Fleetwood Mac would uh, like that too much. Um, Ryan McDonald, um, they added a million people to this country in nine months during a housing shortage. WTF. Yeah, yeah I think we need There's no for excuse that. for that. WTF. And that does not mean where's the funds in that. So. Yeah, again, Cypher and I aren't against immigration, but we are against bringing more people into the country than we can support for housing, than we can support for... Um, you know, our, our social programs, such as medicine, um, it, it makes no sense. Like, it, you, I, it's not fair to the people that are currently living here. And it's also not fair to people who are leaving their homes in a different country, coming to Canada, being told what a wonderful, amazing place it is, and then getting here and being homeless. Uh, let's see. Diane Sylvain, uh, that motion passed in Ogo uh, on March 27th, 20th, but the consulting committee with the witnesses, is that going to hurt all parties now? Yeah, so the motion, uh, there was a motion passed, I believe it was on the 27th, and what this motion was for is because the Liberals were getting frustrated that Kelly McCauley 
was calling witnesses on his own to um, uh, to committee, which is the chair's prerogative in every committee. So they put forth a motion that before calling any witnesses to committee, that the chair would need to discuss it with committee, and that motion passed. So that um, that will potentially only hurt the conservatives in uh, in that committee, Diane. To uh, to answer your question, um, and. Um, I don't know if that's going to carry over into the next government or not, but uh, time will tell. Um, but um, it it all depends because a lot of what Ogo is doing is on a rive can anyway, and the NDP and the Bloc are on the conservative side when it comes to a rive can. So I don't think it's actually going to hurt them as it relates to a rive can. Um, anything with the carbon tax, yeah, it's gonna it's going to uh, to hurt the conservatives, but. The carbon tax is, I think you're going to hear that uh, come to a crescendo um, at, at the start of April. And then as we move into uh, May and June, that's probably going to, I would say, not disappear, but you're not going to hear it talked about as much as a, uh, as a political talking point because the conservatives will need to move on to something else. Otherwise, it becomes stale. Um, let's see, JD, a uh, member comment, Cypher is more funny than 22 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well. And he also cost taxpayers $1.3 billion less. There you go. That sounds fair. I'll take that. Uh, I don't want to be costing taxpayers any money at all. Uh, James Metcher, what is going on with the foreign... Uh, Oh, with the uh, the public inquiry, yeah. So they're um, they're going to be getting into that. Uh, um, there's been uh, actually a lot of noise about uh, the diaspora community, uh, the Chinese diaspora community, because they don't want to come to um, to testify because of the fact that there's uh, of a Han Dong and B. I forget the other gentleman's name. Um, but he's a he's a liberal official um, because they are two of the people that the diaspora community is actually afraid of because they have you know alleged ties to the uh, People's Republic of China. Oh, was it Michael Chong? Was it him? Michael Chen. Or yeah, I think Michael you're right. Chen. Yeah. Um, not to be confused with the conservative Michael Chong. So um, so there's been a lot of noise about that and that they don't want to come because they don't feel safe. So. It will be, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how how that works out. But if there's anything significant to come out of that, don't worry, we will uh, we will let you know. Beth Simmons with a question: uh, Has Siphon Fox heard anything on the rain tax uh, that Mayor, <laughs> yeah, that uh, Olivia Chow is trying to? Implement? I did read something very briefly about it. Um, it sounded absolutely ridiculous. Um, we we don't tend to report on municipal things. Um, we tend to stay within the the federal realm. Yeah, because it's uh, it's it's only relevant to uh, I'll say quote unquote only only relevant to the people of uh, of Toronto that particular city. Yeah. But um, uh, but if 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 it it gets too ridiculous, you know, we may we may look at. Uh, uh, doing something short on that um, because you know it is Olivia Chow, uh, Vivian McDonald Miles. Um, all the new folks brought in. Do you with all the new folks brought in? Do you know uh, are they able to vote in 2025, or is there a waiting period? So you have actually have to have Canadian citizenship, and it's unlikely that they're going to get that that quickly. Yeah, I don't know how long it takes to go from being a permanent resident to being. A citizen um, but it's not instantaneous I know that like you can't just show up in Canada and the next day vote in the election it does take time to get your citizenship it's quite a process yeah. I know people that it's taken them years to do it so um, AT with a $10 super chat thank you very much for that um, uh, Dana Wick with a $2 super chat happy Easter everybody happy to you thank as you well. happy Easter uh, Mary Kay Styles with a $7 super chat did you see uh, in global news about Cordex selling their second $2.2 million Ottawa office. I wonder if the some of those guys will be a flight risk. Well, um, I think it's because that they're done. Like, because the majority of their contracts were with the federal government. So they've been blacklisted from the government. So there's no more business. 
<laughs> like yeah they're done so they have to close down the office to cut expenses and you got to wonder does that mean they're going to fire like the 40 or 50 people that uh, actually worked for them um trevor w uh with a suggestion uh, get Fox and Cypher to start a party, the Northern Perspective Party. <laughs> you know, though, I don't think it would be very different from the Conservative Party. <laughs> like, especially their platform and what they're running on right now. Um, that's why we support them, because they're the only ones talking common sense. Do I care about, you know, I don't know, saving the environment while it's difficult to, you know, keep a roof over our head and, and, and feed our family? Like, no, nobody cares about that stuff. That's why we don't support the Liberals. That's why we don't support the NDP. We care about a, a prosperous country. And and the Conservatives, I think, are going to be the ones that are going to help us achieve that. So, Yeah, and um, by the way, I'll make you a deal. If the Conservatives get in and they go completely off the rails, we'll consider it. <laughs> <laughs> So if we get to the point where we're talking about uh, Pierre and the Conservatives like we are about Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, we'll, we'll strongly consider it. So, uh, but cr fingers crossed, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. If they do, then they better watch out because we will be watching. That's going to be, I think, our new slogan is we will be watching. Uh, JD, um, a lot of the housing problems, which there are many... But I, but what I see a lot is the size of the houses people want. I got a newly rented two bed with basement, and pay six hundred a month. Well, it 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 all depends. Um, like in uh, where where we live, um, housing went like a house, uh, an detached? actual house. Yeah. Um, f went renting between eighteen and twenty two hundred dollars a month to over four thousand dollars a month. And those are, you know, I guess that's a three, three, four bedroom house, but still, um, uh, and, and we're seeing advertisements for a thousand dollars for a room, uh, where we are. So it, it, it all depends on where you live. Well, I think it depends. Like there's, there's no one size fits all for housing. Um, I know when you and I were younger, we lived in a condo and neither of us really liked it. The neighbors were noisy and we didn't like having to use the elevator and whatever. It just, it wasn't suited for us, but we have family members who live in, in condos and they really enjoy it. It's like a social thing for them. You know, they're on their condo board. Um, they play like darts with friends and stuff. So they really enjoy having their friends there in the building. Um, but for us, you know, being being in a home with a little bit of land for our son and the dogs was ideal for us. So I don't think housing is a one size fits all. I think there needs to be plenty of options for different people um, because not everyone's going to be at the same stage in life and not everybody's going to have the same wants and needs for a property. Yep. Uh, let's see, Chris B. Um, since liberals only listen to Trudeau and pay no attention to facts, how the heck do we get them to stop voting for Trudeau and liberals? Um, well, you saw you saw the Atlantic provinces successful. So the other major geographical point of, I would say, political terror that the liberals need to worry about is the greater Toronto area, those ridings. So if you live in one of those writings, really start writing a lot of letter, letters to your Liberal MP. And if, even if you're not in that writing, start writing letters to the Liberal MP and start demanding an election. Start demanding that they vote against the carbon tax. Like, put a lot of pressure on them. Um, the if, if there's one thing that we learned from the carbon tax carve-out in eastern Canada and the Atlantic provinces is that the liberals will act if they feel that their constituents are at risk in uh, in in certain i would say liberal political fortresses like they 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 did really well in atlantic canada in the last election so the carve out was an attempt to appease them so the other major battleground for the liberals is the greater toronto area so if there is a whole bunch of MPs that are put under a lot of pressure by the greater Toronto crowd, you might see something happen. Even if even if it's 
you know, you demand that Trudeau resign. Something like that. So that's uh, that's what I would say uh, in in terms of that uh, in terms of that question. Fox, do you have anything else to add? No, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, I think we've shown what can happen when we all write our MPs or when we all write one specific MP. Um, for example, I'm, I know we keep going back to this, but when we had encouraged everyone to write Damien Curick and thank him for standing up for us in the House, and we actually got a reply from his staff that said, you know, thanks for reaching out. We actually got a bunch of, of emails for Damien, and he's reading them all. So there you go. Yeah, so they, they do get them. They do read them. Um, Diane Sylvain with a $20 super chat. RCMP Commissioner Mike Duham has confirmed to CTV News. I can confirm with you, Vassie, that we've received multiple referrals to investigate on Rodkin, and we are investigating. Duham said in an interview with CTV News this week. Yeah. Awesome. Because they got, well, they, they better confirm. They should have been investigating for almost a year now. So we'll see uh, see how quick, quick, quote unquote, quick they get through this. Um, haha, all I want is a 900 uh, square foot house with a 5,000 square foot garage. <laughs> That's my thing. Amazing. Dana Wick with a five uh, five dollar super chat. Uh, Dan, are you a car chick? Is that what you want, or do you do you have a big hobby that you need that space for? Uh, or lots of other toys, like snowmobiles and stuff. Could be, could yeah. be. <laughs> oh my God, Kenny, they're going to destroy Canada, you bastard! <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, we got a question from Ken um, what happened there? Uh, get back up here. Question from Kim Court. And uh, the question is, um, Barnaby, why do we not hear anything uh, out of the Board of Trudeau Foundation resigning? Um, so I don't think you've he we've heard a lot from that because they're going to be in the scope of the public inquiry as a result of China funneling money through them. Um, allegedly looking to put up a statue of Pierre Trudeau in Montreal, right? And uh, and some other stuff. So I think that's probably why you haven't heard a lot uh, out of it yet. Um, they all resigned because of all the stuff that was found. So, you know, there's going to be a new board and they're going to take over and they're supposed to be completely insulated from all this stuff. So you're, you're probably not going to hear a lot um, outside of what's going to come out of the... Uh, um, uh, public inquiry. Uh, Dana Wick. Oh, I'm sorry, Dana. You're a dude. Uh, of course, there's some some dudes named Dana. My apologies. Um, uh, so that's a two dollars super chat. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I, I completely relate to to the five thousand dollar five thousand square foot garage then. Okay, and um, Jordan McKinnon uh, with a question. Uh, if Cypher, if both Cypher and Fox could travel back in time and ask a former prime minister questions, what prime minister would it be and what would they ask? <laughs> okay, oh, I, yeah, I have my question. That's such a good question, but I, I, don't, I don't know. You I go, have my you question. Go. I would travel back in time to talk to Mr. John A. McDonald. And my question to him would be, what is a woman? You're awful. That's, okay, <laughs> I've got mine. So I would travel back in time and speak to the first Trudeau. And um, I don't know exactly what I would ask him, but it would basically be something along the lines of like, why do you want kids? You don't really want kids. You, you shouldn't have kids. Or to be, <laughs> do, you, do you pay attention to your wife when she goes to Cuba? Yeah, it, it would be something to dissuade him from, from fathering Justin. I'll put it that way. So... Um, Okay, I'll, 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 I'll answer for real. Um, I would... Um, I, I would still go back and talk to Johnny McDonald. And I would ask him... If he... If he were alive... 200 years from now, meaning then... What is his... What would his vision for Canada be? Oh, that's a good one. And I would just sit back and I would listen for about a half an hour. Because um, I think he would have 
quite the uh, quite the response. Because remember, he built the railroad, so um, I'd be very interested to see what his response to that would be. So, uh, okay, and we have short sack with a two dollar uh, super chat. Uh, Twelve thirty a.m. Sleepy eyes. Good night, uh, NP gang. Love you all, and good night to you. Thank you. Good night. Did you get this one from uh, Glenn Stewart? It says, 80 letters near ready to go for posting to the NDP and the block. Only 150 left. Beauty. That's awesome. Beauty, And Glenn. everybody, um, I say it whenever I have the opportunity, but just remember that you do not need to put postage on an envelope to send letter mail to your MP or any MP in the House of Commons. So... Anyhow, folks, it's 11.30. Um, I think all of us have a really big day tomorrow, being Easter Sunday. And if you don't, sleep in. Take it easy and uh, uh, just relax. And make sure you fill up your car before April 1st, as, uh, uh, as the saying goes. But um, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. It's been a blast. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the sneak peek clip from uh, Mr. Larry Brock. And um, uh, I... I don't think you're probably going to get a video on Sunday night, but we will see. Um, and uh, Tamara Leach with a $14 super chat. You're doing a great job, Barnaby. Uh, well, he is half drunk all the time, so that's, uh, that'll encourage him. Thank you very much, Tamara. <laughs> but we'll, he's a good bartender. <laughs> we'll let him know. We'll let him know. But um, uh, we hope everyone has a very safe Easter. Um, if you plan to... Um, have some conversations with your families um, because um, as we heard on the me, you know, we were watching some of the mainstream media today. They were saying that Easter is actually one of those times that elections are, are won or lost on um, because it's often that large families get together and end up talking politics. So bring all of the facts that you've heard on our channel to bear and see if you can win over uh, some, uh, some more liberal voters. As we heard earlier in the stream, you guys are the ones that are really doing the the real work out there by converting these people that you uh, that you know that you meet and that may actually be connected by blood or otherwise. So, um, so keep doing all of that great work out there. Convert some liberals, convert some NDPers, convert some PPCers, and we have a real shot of making this a, a historic election whenever it does happen. So, any final thoughts, Fox? Yeah, that's it. Just talk to the people around you. Keep the conversation going. Um, and don't be aggressive because that tends to turn people off. But use the facts that you've heard here on Northern Perspective. Um, check out the links that we've put in the descriptions of our videos. Uh, that's where the real facts come from. And you can use those to talk to people. Like when they say, oh, eight out of 10 people get you know, money back from the carbon tax. Well, actually, that's not true. More families are losing money. Here's the parliamentary budget officer's report. There you go. Again, the chart. <laughs> and Spiky Mikey, 33 of the $5 Super Chat. Happy Easter, guys. God bless you uh, and your family and your channel. And bless everybody who is watching. You guys stay safe. And we will see you in the comments and later this week and most likely for a live stream on Wednesday for Arrive Can. Until then, have a wonderful night. Happy Easter and take care of yourselves. Thank you, everybody. Have a happy Easter.